we're up bright and early-ish on day two of filming on these cars. And as I said yesterday, we're gonna be doing a little bit more of a structured off-road trip today. So yesterday was a lot of product pictures. We parked the cars, we got all the exterior shots that Clinton needed and wanted. And now we're kind of test the vehicles. We're gonna sort of enjoy the drive up. And so, Gregan, in his infinite wisdom, brought us to, where are we? We are at, we're at the trailhead for Tokerville Falls. Confirmed, because of that sign right there. It says extremely rough road, four wheel drive recommended or all wheel drive in our case. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, yeah, hopefully. And you said this is in Zion National Park area? Yep, we're really close to Zion National Park, um, which is well known all across the world for hiking trails and off-road trails. And this is kind of one of the more popular ones. Okay. When we get to the top, there should be a cool waterfall that we can drive straight through. Should be really nice scenic. Awesome, okay. Well, Gregan's really promising a good time. Um, so we'll see if he follows through with it and we'll see if these cars make it up. It says extremely rough road ahead, so there's nothing left but to do it. Let's go. Yeah. abundantly clear as we go up this trail is that the Outback is a bit more capable because of the power and has a little bit more uh, ground clearance. So we got to this area that's a little bit tougher than everything else and he had a bit of a struggle getting up it. I think because we're lighter, we're gonna make a, uh, or have an easier time of it. But let's find out, we're either gonna get stuck or we're gonna make it. Well, length. I mean, that's that's a pretty tough spot right there. We still have sway bars connected. Like, if you were really getting serious, you'd probably want to disconnect your sway bars before you tried something like this, and then you'd have a little bit more articulation coming up some of these spots where you're getting one exactly. or two wheels off the ground. But even with the sway bars, like we made it. It wasn't an issue. Yeah. Well, we've been driving for about seven miles now and just kind of stopping intermittently to have a little fun, do a little more videography. Um, but we've officially reached our end point, or soon. It's the falls, which is right down there. Gregan's doing some dumb stuff in the outback. Clinton is gonna do the same thing. Hopefully not flipping us. <laughs> <laughs> and then we should pop out right at the falls. There they are, the falls.
I gotta say, one of the really cool things about off-roading and overlanding is there's usually an awesome destination that you're going to. So it's fun along the way. It's a bit of a challenge if you make it a challenge, and then you get to arrive at a place like this. Whereas like Stan's cars, it's not fun to drive. And then you arrive at a meet that you don't want to be at with other people that don't want to be there either. So I think overlanding crowd has the one up on Stan's guys when it comes to this type of thing. You get an outback, you get a cross track, and you can do stuff like this. Like it's not out of the realm to do stuff like this. No, at the end of the day, our two cars are equipped with what? Some wheels and tires, uh, lift kit, and a couple of extras. I mean, the, the fender flares obviously make it look better, and they kind of saved our asses in a couple of places where you have brush or rocks, so you're not scraping up against the body of the car. Uh, but that's only a few items that we've thrown on and made them incredibly capable. So from the factory, they do a good job, but just those couple of things really take it up to the next notch. Because I don't think we would have made it down half of those trails without the lift kit, certainly without the lift kit, without some of the other modifications on the car. So, but you're right. Couple, couple hundred bucks worth of stuff on a car and it becomes incredibly capable. So, we were just at the falls. We stopped to take some more pictures and videos and we're kind of making our way down the trail. Uh, so this is probably a good time to recap what we've done today. What I've learned is it doesn't take much to have that vehicle or make it more capable than what it came from the factory. I mean, Subarus are obviously good off-road. They're known for that, but a lot of these um, challenges that we've run into, even a good off-roader isn't gonna be able to handle. And so those couple of upgrades that we've done uh, certainly made this trip possible. And it's an attainable thing to do. If you have an Outback Crosstrack Forester, uh, all of those makes models that we haven't necessarily catered to. And that's exactly the rationale for the Trails by Grimsby program is to be able to do this, to be able to allow you guys to do it um, and ourselves, obviously, coming out here and having an absolute blast. Well, it's been a few weeks since we got back from Utah, and as promised, we were gonna sit down with Greg and uh, Clinton and myself over a uh, conference call and just kind of talk about our experience, maybe you recap and give our thoughts um, on the whole trip and the experience and really everything that went down. So what did we learn on this trip? What do we get out of it? And uh, how does it pertain to the new Trails by Grimspeed brand? You know, with my opening thoughts, I think these cars, when you do, just a few light mods to them, you know, the lift kit, the bigger wheels and tires, fender flares, all that stuff, like it really makes it a very capable overland vehicle. The 98% of where you're just trying to go somewhere or you're going to camp or you're going to take your family just out through the mountains, like this car will do it all. Yeah, exactly. And that's one thing that uh, that I kind of took away from, from that is you're not doing hardcore off-roading every day. It's probably a Sunday thing when you go out with your, with your friends or your family and you take some of the same trails that we did where there is some moments where it got a little bit hairy, um, treacherous, but the cars handled all of that. Uh, that's the cars themselves, but also the modifications we did to them, especially that lift kit. The fender flares certainly helped. Uh, and just the aesthetic stuff made it look look a lot nicer once you got up to the top of your destination. Um, but really, we, we ran into Jeeps along the way and we handled it just as well as they did. You know, at some point, you know, the capabilities kind of reach a crossroads. Um, but the typical owner of Outbacks and Crosstreks and Ascents and Foresters, they're going to be doing exactly what we did uh, from time to time and, and really enjoying it. If you're just looking for a general overlanding rig that you can just take your family out on the weekends and uh, go out and find some trails and maybe do some overnight camping or something like that, this is like those two vehicles, either one really is going to be the go-to route yeah so that actually kind of leads me to the next question and, and which is having driven both of these cars and and i know you guys have been in a sense in foresters out of the off-road offerings from subaru which one would you take back up that trail the pros and cons i think to all of them they're you know, obviously all built on a very similar platform all wheel drive uh, you know a 10 inch ground clearance after the lift like a a good comfortable interior 
The Outback is going to be your more luxury car. You're going to have like the nicer leather inside, the uh, upgraded X mode, the extra cameras, like all these things kind of contribute to the Outback being a significantly nicer vehicle on the road. Uh, also, you know, the turbo engine, a lot more power, a lot of those things. That, but I don't know if that necessarily makes it any better on the trails. Uh, the length is one thing that I know we have talked about before. It is quite a bit longer than the Crosstrek especially, so the Crosstrek might be a little more capable if you're getting in somewhere with trees or a tight corner on like a, a sharp cliffside or something like that. For me, if I was choosing a road just for the off-road portion, I think the Crosstrek would probably be the winner. Um, it also did have its own shortcomings. For instance, uh, the power is a little bit low. Um, if you're trying to climb up something, you know, you can really feel it. Uh, I have not driven one of the newer 2.4 liter engines, and I would really like to see how that performs. And I have a hunch that that would probably be the ticket for me. Yeah, and I, I was kind of thinking the same thing. The 18 plus, the interior is a little bit nicer. You have some more of that power. And really, my big complaint on the cross track wasn't necessarily the power on the trails. It was the power getting there. So you know, we had an 80 mile an hour speed limit on the highway there. We had a hard time even getting to the speed limit, let alone surpassing it. So Greg was constantly in the outback, miles ahead, <laughs> and we were just flooring it the whole time. And so that could be a little bit of an issue. I mean, it's something most people can deal with just to get to the uh, to the trail and then it it does good enough but you're right a little bit more power would be awesome the wheelbase i also enjoyed a bit more over the the outback um, just because it was more nimble but one thing i was going to mention is we didn't have a forester there i have driven some of the forester sports and i would really want to take one of those up and especially if, if trails uh, by grim Street comes out with lift kit for that and some of the other performance stuff for that um, that might be that middle ground between the two cars that really is perfect you have the power you have the good size the nice interior um, and, and really all the capabilities of, of both the cars what about you i'm leaning more towards the outback being able to throw stuff in the back um, and maybe even sleep back there if you're doing some camping but the wheelbase really doesn't bother me because i want something that's going to kind of play both worlds a uh, daily driver and something that can go off road and I think that the wheelbase helps with yeah. the capabilities the maybe of the car. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think it's probably dependent on the trail you take it out on too. Ours in particular was kind of tight and rocky and, and so that's where me and Greg and probably lean towards the cross track a little more. Mm -hmm. But I mean one thing to reflect on is shout out to Subaru for offering basically every gap filler that people will want. Mm -hmm. Starting with that cross track having yeah. the larger Forester, having the Outback, and then we didn't even talk about the Ascent, really, and that seems to be more of that family vehicle if you're doing some of the off-road and overland stuff with two or three kids, your wife's coming along, your dog, now that one makes sense as well. So really, they're just covering all of the bases, um, you know, besides a truck, essentially. But one thing I want to talk about, like, now that we kind of know which vehicles we liked, is the Trails by Grocery parts that we brought and equipped onto the cars. So I kind of see them as three different categories. We've obviously got some of the aesthetic stuff under the hood. We've got a couple uh, shrouds and covers that we were essentially field testing, just making sure that they would keep up with the environment. Um, that's more on the aesthetic side. Then we've got something like the fender flares, and that's a that's mostly aesthetic, but there is some performance implications, especially when we got into those tight areas where there was brush. Uh, if we didn't have the flares, we would certainly have more scratches on the car, um, just from the terrain, and then also uh, putting our method wheels and uh, tire package on, it just would not have looked right without the extended flares. Um, so both aesthetic and performance. And then when we're talking about the lift kit underneath the car, that's, I suppose you could say aesthetic in the sense that you know, some of the pictures of media that we took, it looks great lifted uh, over stock, but really the performance aspect of allowing us to get up that trail, because I do not think we would have made it, well, I know we wouldn't have made it without the lift kits. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, especially in the Outback. And so um, that's one thing we can talk about. Greg, and you're the engineer, so if you want to break down the lift kits a little bit more, let's start with the real performance part in all of this. One of the biggest things you're looking for in lift kit is increased ground clearance. And with that also comes along, you know, your front and rear bumper approach angle. Um, so when you're taking these cars up, it's the two inches that they're spec'd out, which I think is slightly different based on, on the model and front rear or whatever, but overall the two inch lift kit, so then you can take those like 
couple spots where you had like a you know 10 inch shelf we had to climb if your front bumper is sticking out at eight inches on a stock car you know, you're not going to be able to even approach that without hitting your bumper and ruining some body panels but you know when you raise it then you can get your tire in there and then you just keep climbing up um one of the things i did like about this lift kit that's different than a lot of the other ones um the use of these uh strut extensions um so it effectively lengthens the strut which allows you to keep oem geometry without having to compensate in the top pass or anything like that and also you get the benefit of uh, changing your springs with spring rates without having to worry about spring bind or uh, coil bind or anything like that you know you have those advantages from this style compared to like a puck and you're also significantly cheaper than like a bull that a coil over it, which would cost, you know, three, four times as much as this kit. Yeah, exactly. And actually, speaking of springs, I just happen to have one right next to us. Um, one thing that I, you know, from a non-engineering perspective, just wanted to mention is I kind of kept forgetting that we were on aftermarket springs and suspension, essentially. It, as in, it felt like OEM, and we obviously had the lift, so we had the ground clearance to get through, but at no point did I feel like it was too stiff or or the other way, kind of too soggy going into corners. You know, I'm someone that's more used to the on-road stuff, so I put stiff coilovers on, I max out the damping, um, and I'm okay with that, but every time I take the car out, I mean, it's it's uncomfortable and I can feel it and it's not for everyone. In this case, I mean, we drove it up the trail, obviously, but we also spent a lot of time driving around town and whether we're going out to eat or just sightseeing. Um, and at no point did I feel like, okay, this suspension is something I can't handle day to day. Yeah. And that's thanks to these. And I think they are also increased spring rates compared to stock. Um, and this is done to compensate for if you're going to load the vehicle with like a big roof rack and all your camping gear, just throwing stuff in the back for extra people. Like this will help keep that lift hit right where it's supposed to be, so you maintain the ground clip. But the 20% is enough where you're not really going to feel it on your everyday roads, so you can still maintain that OEM comfort, which I think is a big comparison, a big advantage compared to like uh, a Jeep or a 4Runner, which is built on, you know, the truck chassis. Those are arguably more uncomfortable to drive on the roads or whatever, because yeah. you're built for clearance and everything. I would think that most of the people that are going to be modifying their vehicles for off-road use are going to be doing relatively mild mods. Yeah. And so, again, you still want to keep it as a comfortable car in your daily life and then adding those things to make it capable. I guess the next thing to talk about is the, the fender flares. Uh, again, I see them as sort of a 50-50 aesthetic and performance. I mean, it's not adding horsepower, uh, obviously, but it is adding some protection to the outside of the car. Um, and especially, you know, when once they got dusty after after an hour of, of driving, you could see where things were contacting the, uh, the plastic and that would have been scratches in the paint otherwise. And so one of the best things is uh, they are OEM quality. It's not the same stuff you get on eBay, you, know, you pay your 150, 200 bucks and you get these flimsy plastic pieces that you have to drill on. Uh, this kit is is OEM quality and I was, the first time I've ever seen it installed on a car was on the Utah trip and, and I was kind of floored at how the fit and finish uh, of those those flares ended up. And I actually have one here, obviously you can't uh, tell texture or, or uh, structure through the video. Um, but it is something that you would find at like a dealer as an add-on package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the finish, the texture on the outside, like it's very OEM looking. It matches the texture on a lot of the other trim on the vehicle. It looks like it could have come from the factory that way. Those I know people are gonna find uh, to be awesome. And, um, and really, if you're doing a lift kit and you're gonna be putting a, a bigger wheel package on, then the flares are pretty much necessary. Uh, for, for, if anything else, the look of the car. And you guys will see the pictures. The Crosstrek, in my opinion, looked absolutely stellar. The Outback as well, they're two kind of different designs. One's a little more angular, one's a little more round. But either way, it's sort of a, I would put in the OEM Plus category in terms of looks. Yeah, when you add these flares, you're yeah. not like doing anything over the top. When you see another Outback on the road, you're not gonna look exactly the same as the other Outback. It's gonna be a little bit more aggressive and stand out which is really cool. You're gonna notice like, oh, that's a nice Outback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that in town, if we were if we were driving in and we parked next to an Outback, which Subaru people always, you see a Subaru from afar, you park right next to them. 
um, a factory outback versus just the couple of mods that we had done yeah. ours. It was really night and day, just like that. So I guess the last thing to, to talk about is the, you would call it purely aesthetic stuff under the hood. Not every single example was there. That's actually something that now we're back at the warehouse working on doing all the media for. Feather shrouds, radiator uh, shrouds, pulley cover, and in different colors. So red, black, um, we have kind of a specific limited green for the trails program. So some really exciting stuff coming there. And, and really the point of those is just to turn kind of the bland engine bay uh, into something a little bit more unique. Those little things are always the sweat make a car feel like it's yours yeah you know you don't have to go out and do you know a ten thousand dollar bill to really make it stand out but you can do these little things and like even if no one does see it like it's something that you know that like you you took the time and you put this on to make it different to make it the color you know the engine bay like stand out the way you would like to see it yeah and i think that's what a lot of these aesthetic mods are it's just you really should be driving it for you for something that you really enjoy yeah yeah, I'm excited to see the direction where the trails goes to. I've been you know, really happy to be a part of this project and help you guys out when you come here to Utah about filming uh, the blast. Yeah, yeah, well, and we appreciate you having us out there. I think we're definitely going to have to come back. Um, I was thinking maybe we talked about the fortune and the ascent. If we can get our hands on those, we can kind of come back and then figure out you know what we like about them and com compare and contrast to, to this trip. Well, thank you again, Greg. Um, and by the time you guys are seeing this video, we're going to have all the Trails by Grimspeed stuff out. And so you can go on Grimspeed.com to check it all out. I'm sure it'll be all over the place on social media, through our authorized dealers. And so... This is sort of where it all started. This is where we tested the product. This is where we got a feel for the, the lifestyle and, and just what people are doing with these vehicles, with these modifications, and, and um, what direction they're taking their their uh, enthusiasm in. And for us, uh, I mean, I'm on board. Yeah, I want to keep doing it. Me too. So, yeah, I think you've, you've convinced us that uh, the Overland lifestyle is, is one worth having. Absolutely. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. See ya.